Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, I'm going to show you why some types of myocardial infarction can demonstrate with an ST elevation or an ST depression in an ECG. So, first thing we need to do is we need to have a look at what happens in a normal heart muscle cell. All right. So remember that if I were to just draw up a heart muscle cell called a cardiomyocyte, that if we were to have a look at the ions associated with it, sodium and potassium predominantly, that you're going to have basically all of that sodium sitting outside the cell and all of that potassium sitting inside the cell. And as we all know from basic biochemistry, ions like to go down their concentration gradient. So sodium wants to go down its concentration gradient and go inside the cell. Potassium wants to go down its concentration gradient and go outside the cell. All right. The thing is that sodium can't go inside the cell because the channels for sodium are shut, not letting sodium in. Potassium, however, does have channels that are open. And so potassium can freely exit the cell of the heart muscle. And that means potassium will leak out of the cell. Now I want you to think about this. Potassium has a positive charge with it and therefore carries that positive charge outside, which means when we compare what's positive and what's more negative, this positive stuff goes outside, which makes it slightly more negative inside compared to outside. In actual fact, if we were to compare this charge difference, the charge difference would be around about negative 90 millivolts. Now this is what is happening in a heart muscle cell when it's at rest, when it's not contracting. And this is what we call the resting membrane potential. In actual fact, if I were to draw up a graph here and have negative 90 millivolts here, this is where everything begins. So if I want to tell this heart muscle cell to contract, what we need to do is we need to make the inside go from negative to positive, and that's called depolarization. And in order to depolarize this cell, we need positive sodium to come in. Now, you have certain stimuli that can tell sodium to come into the cell, which makes it a little bit more positive. It opens up sodium channels, makes it a little bit more positive, and it starts to drift up towards what we call a threshold, which is around about negative 70 millivolts. Once it hits this particular threshold, all the sodium channels open up, all of the sodium moves into that cell, it becomes really positive inside the cell, and this is the depolarization event of the action potential. Once that's happened and it's hit its peak, these sodium channels shut, these potassium channels remain open, and we open up some more channels, which are calcium channels, and we know that calcium going into the cell is what tells the muscle to contract. So without calcium going in, no muscles contracting, right? Now, if you've got, so remember these sodium channels are shut, no positive stuff coming in from sodium. We've got positive things going out, which makes this go down slightly negative again, but we've got positive calcium going in. They basically balance each other out and you hit a plateau, right? Then the calcium channel shut, potassium keeps going out, and then it goes back down. And this is what happens, the action potential, for a heart muscle cell. Now I want to give you an example in which, let's just say, if we reset this back to resting membrane potential, we've got the potassium leaking outside, and we've got the sodium still outside. And the charge is negative 90. We're down here. All right. So I'm going to draw another one on this. But let's just say something happens in which the concentration of potassium outside increases. What that means is, comparatively now, the potassium, there's still more potassium inside the cell, but the concentration outside has increased. Its need to diffuse outside is reduced, right? If you've got a really steep gradient, heaps of potassium here, no potassium here, it really wants to go outside. If you increase the concentration out here, potassium really doesn't want to go outside as much. Now what that means is, potassium remains inside the cell, and this is a little bit more positive 
than it was. Instead of being negative 90, it might be around negative 50. So let's now say, let's have an example where for some reason, we've got more potassium outside the heart muscle cell, and it leads to the resting membrane potential no longer being negative 90, but being negative 50. What this means is, is it's already begun to depolarize, which means this type of cell in this scenario has started to depolarize. It depolarizes early, and what happens is that if it starts at negative 50, sodium channels, the fast acting sodium channels don't work only that ca those calcium channels work and they're slow. So it means the depolarization event, the real sharp one that we've got here in red, doesn't really happen, it's quite slow. And it finishes early and then repolarizes early. What I'm saying is, if I were to increase the potassium concentration outside of a cardiomyocyte relative to the inside, you get an earlier depolarization event and an earlier repolarization event. Keep that in mind because now we need to talk about what happens in ST elevation and ST depression. First thing is this, a STEMI, ST elevated myocardial infarction, is where on an ECG trace, which is the P wave, QRS complex, and T wave, P, Q, R, S, and T wave, the ST segment is elevated. And it looks a little bit, I can get rid of this now. It looks a little bit like this. That's the ST elevation. Question is, why does this occur? Now in other cases, you can sometimes get an ST depression in which you have that, that, ST depression. All right, let's talk about how these scenarios occur. First thing is this, let's focus on the ST depression. So that's the isoelectric point, and that was the isoelectric point there. And you can see ST elevation, ST depression. All right. Let's start with the ST depression. In an ST depression, it is representative of ischemia, which means lack of oxygen and nutrients going to a particular area that does not go through the entire width of the ventricle. So let's just say we have an ischemic event happening here. Now I want you to think about this, right? What usually happens is if you have a lack of blood flow through the coronary arteries that feed the heart due to some sort of atherosclerotic plaque or thrombus that is formed, right? It's first going to affect the subendocardium, which is this area here, before it affects the rest of the tissue. Okay? So the subendocardium first. And this is the scenario we're acting upon here is we're now affecting this area. And what I've got drawn up on this side is we've zoomed in to that. That's what we're zoomed in on, which means we're now looking at this particular area here. We've got this part of the tissue is not being fed properly. Let's make that a little bit bigger. The point is the part that's not being fed properly does not go the entire width of the heart muscle. You also need to know that obviously when we do an ECG, there's going to be various electrodes. And I'm sure you're watching this video because you know where those electrodes are placed. We're going to have an electrode, for example, sitting here. Let's say that this is lead two, for example. So we've got lead two sitting here, having a look, seeing what's happening. You know with ECGs that if depolarization happens in the direction of the lead, Right? So if depolarization happens, depol, happens in the direction of the lead, you get a bump up on, on an ECG. If depolarization happens away from the lead, you get a dip down. If repolarization happens in the direction of the lead, you get a dip down. And if repolarization happens away from the lead, you get a dip up. 
This is the cheat sheet for ECGs, as we all know. All right. This tissue is not being fed enough oxygen or enough nutrients. What happens then is if there's not enough oxygen and nutrients, your mitochondria can't produce enough ATP. There is a certain type of potassium channel. Remember, potassium wants to go out. There's a certain type of channel that's blocked by ATP, which means it remains shut when there's enough ATP present. Under ischemic scenarios, no ATP, those potassium channels open up. And what will that result in? So I'm gonna draw a whole bunch of cardiomyocytes here, right? A whole bunch. In this affected area. All right, not enough oxygen supply feeding this area, not enough ATP. What happens is the potassium channels open up and potassium leaks out of these cells. That means what you now have is an accumulation of potassium outside the cell. Now I said to you, what happens in scenarios if potassium increases outside the cell, the potassium inside is less inclined to go out and it becomes more positive inside the cell, which leads to early depolarization. Okay, in tissue like this, which has not fully become ischemic, but in part subendocardium, Potassium increases outside the cell. The potassium inside doesn't really want to go out. So it becomes not negative 90 millivolts, but more closer to negative 50 maybe. And it depolarizes early. Now, when is it depolarizing? If we draw up the ECG, right? I want you to think about this. There's different parts of an ECG. Let's just forget the P wave for the moment. And we're starting here, just before the QRS complex. So you've got that, then you're going to have, uh, let's just start here. If that's depolarized early in an isoelectric point, when it's supposed to be, right, zero millivolts, nothing's happening, right? What happens is this depolarization event that's happening early spreads out to the tissue that's not supposed to be doing anything yet. It's the isoelectric point and it spreads out from this area when it's supposed to be just before the QRS complex when everything's supposed to be relaxing just before depolarization depolarization spreads in the direction of the lead and what that does is it raises up it raises up the isoelectric point because as you know if depolarization happens in the direction of the lead things go up you get a positive deflection and so what happens is zero millivolts will be around about here but we will start up here. Then, as normal, the rest of the ventriculate, uh, ven ventricular myocardium depolarizes, and this leads to the QRS complex, right? The QRS complex. But once the whole ventricle is depolarized and then repolarizes again, it doesn't care about this part that it missed, and it goes back down to its normal region. And what you have is an ST depression. So in actual fact, it's not the fact that the ST is depressed, it's the fact that during the isoelectric point when nothing is supposed to be happening, because of this ischemic event that didn't go through the entire width of the ventricular muscle, it started higher. And then after everything depolarized and repolarized, it went down. And therefore, ST depression is representative of subendocardial sub ischemia, not transmural or full degree, full width ischemia. Now I want to talk about what happens if it's full distance. Let's now say that somebody is having an ischemic event it's blocked so much for such a long period of time that it goes the entire width. It's called a transmural ischemia. We can draw up these cells. And again, no oxygen, no ATP, potassium channels open, potassium leaks out of these cells. And if potassium is high outside the cell, 
all the other surrounding cells are less likely to diffuse potassium out and they depolarize. But where can they depolarize? They can only depolarize through this tissue. And you can see this happens away from the lead, which means at the isoelectric point in a transmural ischemia, let's say that this is zero millivolts, because it's moving away from the lead depolarization away, the isoelectric point starts lower. And then again, you have the normal ECG, P, QRS, and then what happens is normal depolarization for the rest of it, normal repolarization goes back to the zero millivolt isoelectric point, and now it looks like we have ST elevation. But in actual fact, what it was, was at the isoelectric point before the QRS complex, it began depressed. Therefore, ST elevation is representative of transmural ischemia. So hopefully, this helps you understand exactly what's going on in ST elevation and ST depression in myocardial infarction.